is Xylo, and I'll play Fallout 2 so you won't have to. I do recommend you play the game if you haven't already. Let's dive into the world of Fallout 2. The land of Fallout is barren, harsh, full of beasts, raiders, and slavers alike. I've played Fallout 1. The size and length of the story, world, and dialogue have been greatly expanded, with some added random events like this old man on a bridge that will ask you questions to cross a bridge. If you fail, you just spontaneously combust. I've made three different characters, and this build seemed optimal for me. A high charisma lady that will empty your, your entire stock of money and supplies. I did try to make a max strength endurance and perception build. My Unga Bunga brain could hilariously translate a nearby tribal with the same amount of intelligence as me. The negative side of low intelligence is that you can't get any money at the beginning. Nobody wants to talk to you, just like high school. Go away, stupid one. The merchants and townspeople will downright refuse to talk to you. I've got to admit, some of the responses I get with low intelligence is funny. Like there's responses you get from the elder. I am proud of you, Chosen. You have overcome much. Now, you must go find Vault 13. Vault 13. Bring the Gek home. Gek. Here is a shiny bottle. Vic gave us this. Vic. He is a traitor in Klamath. Klamath. Go to Vic. Find Vault 13. Find Gek. Come home. <sighs> Do your best, child. Uh. Find Vic in Klamath. We are counting on you. Greetings, Chosen. And Sulik, a nearby tribal that is a companion. Hey, friend. Our name be Sulik. What you be needing? Uh. Most people have evil spirits. You, you have stupid spirits. Go see shaman. Get hole in head. Big hole. Very big. Huge. Now that the intro is done, we shall get into the story of Volat 2. Your goal as a chosen one is to retrieve the Gek. Or the Garden of Eden creation kit given to you by the Elder. The land is slowly dying here, and so the tribe has a test for you to check your strength and agility so you won't go out into the waste without any combat skills. Once you don the Vault 13 suit and set off into the waste, you realize that this world is hell. You will die over and over and over and over again. This land is unforgiving, and so that the slavers and raiders. There's a new drug in this game called Jet. Jet is so addictive that it's taken this world by storm. It's made by this Mardino boy called Myron. He made Jet so difficult to go cold turkey that if you don't find a cure, new Reno will wake in the waste and gain power. Ironically, at the end of my playthrough, I hear this. Myron died less than a year after the defeat of the Enclave, stabbed by a jet addict while drinking in the den. His discovery of jet was quickly forgotten, and now there is no one who remembers his name. I always love a good ending. The quests in this game are, are hard to find. I've completely left New Reno and Ready alone. I have only went there to trade and nothing else. If you plan on playing this game, make sure to click on every NPC to see what they say. And if they say anything, write it down. The combat system is just math with a bit of luck, which you could watch a guide on from YouTube or look at the manual to see how the full combat works. The combat took me a while to get used to, I will warn traveling the waste alone is dangerous. But while playing this game, I've seen that burst damage from friendlies is far scarier than almost anything. Now that you retrieved Vic and got his info, you head to Vault City and witness something. Old man, you will come with us. Leave us alone! I will never support the cause of your superiors! I will not ask you again. Come now, or you will be made an example of. I would rather what knowledge I have disappear with me into the grave. So be it. Kill them all. This is none of your affair. Turn around and walk away. 
help, just another day in the waste. While traveling to Vault City, I came across this town called Modoc. The town is slowly dying like our village back in Arroyo. I helped them settle trade deals back and forth between the ghost farm and Modoc. If you help them settle the trade deal, the town will become a prosperous one with food. After that little detour, we head to Vault City, an advanced civilization that has turrets guarding the perimeter. This lady, first citizen limit is a giant xenophobe and refuses to see otherwise. Only through talking to the elder to the left, you, act, you gain some actual progress. The job Lynette gives you is to exterminate the lesser races, the peaceful town of Gecko. If you report that you fix a plan, she will get angry at you. Thankfully, I let the raiders have fun with Vault City and weaken them to join the NCR. I just wanted information on where the Holy Vault 13 was, and she was a pain to talk to. I traveled to Gecko, and the city is irradiated because the power plant is messed up and needs optimization. The town is run none other than Harold, the ghoul. You see in Fallout 1, 2, 3, the Brotherhood of Steel, even on the Fallout board game. He's a nice old coot. The quest here is to fix a power plant using the thingy that the Vault City is hoarding because their xenophobia is blinding them to the consequences of not fixing the power plant. And if they don't fix the power plant, they will die from radiation poisoning. After fixing the plant and grabbing the info I need to progress, I head south to Broken Hills, a small community that Harold told me about. The founders of this place is Marcus, a super mutant sheriff, and his old friend Jacob, who was in the Brotherhood of Steel. Their stalemate fight and understanding of one another gave rise to a community of super mutants, ghouls, and humans alike. I helped out Marcus so he could have Marcus as a companion is to help him find the missing people and fix in the uranium mines. The super mutants in charge of the mines tell us that we need to head to New Reno to grab a park. So I head there. New Reno. The land of gambling, prostitution, gang violence, and above all, drugs. Mainly Jet. This place is governed by four families. The Mordinos, the Bishops, the Wrights, and the Salvators. The Mordinos is the one you need to watch. This place also has a boxing tournament that I briefly played. After that, I got jump scared, guilt tripped by the village healer. The hurry up, the village is dying. He does this multiple times. And I'm never prepared for a random person to just flash up on screen while waiting or traveling. I quickly looked around and got the part for Broken Hills and head back to Marcus to get as a companion. I did go to Reading. I didn't want to do quests because I was paranoid I was going to lose the game by taking too long and traveling. Nevertheless, I head from Broken Hills to Vault 13 and encountered an old gang. I fully killed back in Fallout 1, the cons. Since I have a high charisma and speech, they just let me through. And I stole the parts that looked useful and didn't bother killing the later. That killed me several times and the group. After looting Fault 15 and avoiding conflict, I head west and find the NCR. Shady Sands has grown into a nice community that has rules on guns, slaves, and some advanced technology. I stopped a man from blowing up the power plant and I tried to stop the slave trade that was happening just outside of town. I did kill them all. But to open the cells, I need more skill. So I just said at the end of the yard, where's Tandy? I've heard she's in this game, and I think she'll know where the vault is. She doesn't. Apparently, I have to go all the way back to Vault 15, sneak past the leader to get the info I need for Vault 13. When you arrive at the Holy Vault 13, you are greeted by a Deathclaw, an intelligent Deathclaw that is able to speak and communicate directions to each other effectively. He gives us a task that has to do with a supercomputer on the third floor, but the overseer once set. The problem with the computer is that the voice recognition is broken and needs repair. I already saw this on sale at New Reno by a gun salesman. I returned to the, to the Vault 13, installed it, and now I have a gun. It's now time to return to Arroyo with the Gek. While traveling, my Deathclaw companion leaves because he feels like the pack is in danger. Alas, we return the Gek, but it doesn't matter. The Enclave dropped in on the village, killing and capturing the peaceful tribe of Arroyo. Now all 
that time feels wasted on a fruitless journey, feels rage to press on and eliminate the Enclave by going to a place they spoke of during the raid called Navarro. Just south of Navarro is a town called San Fran with Herbologist and the She. To the west there is a giant tanker and a bit east is Herbologist trying to go to space. I talk to the Brotherhood of Steel member and he gives me a quest to infiltrate Navarro by impersonating a lone initiate looking to join the Enclave. So I leave my companions back in San Fran and head to Camp Navarro alone. Once I get there, I'm greeted by a person in a purple robe. that I convinced I was a new initiate and headed to meet the most legendary character in Fallout. Just listen to the voice actor. Welcome to Camp Navarro. So you're the new replacement. You are out of uniform, soldier. Where is your power armor? Don't have any? You expect me to believe that, maggot? The truth is, you lost an expensive piece of army issue equipment. That suit is going to come out of your pay, and you will remain in this man's army until you are 510 years old, which is the number of years it will take for you to pay for a Mark II powered combat armor you have lost. Report to the armory and have a new suit issued to you, then report back to me, Private! Dismissed! Those paper-shuffling jackasses, how the hell do they expect me to run this unit if they keep shortchanging me on supplies? Double-time it over to the armory and get your issue, then report back to me! Dismissed! Soldier, you are still out of uniform. I gave you a direct order to report to supplies and get your issue! Now get out of my face and don't come back until you look like a soldier! This is the second time you've come to me out of uniform, soldier! There will not be a third! Excellent! You're in uniform now, so I'm going to give you a rare opportunity. We are going to start over as if I never met your sorry ass. Would you like that, soldier? Welcome to Camp Navarro. A civilian? How in the hell did a civilian get on this base? I'll have someone's ass for dinner! Get the civilian off government property! Oh, lovely. They've sent me a moron. Listen closely. You will stand guard at the hangar. This is your duty post. You will go there now and stay on guard until told otherwise. Now move it, soldier! I followed the drill instructor's orders to go to storage and get the power armor. Best power armor in this game. And we got it for free. I noticed that there is one Deathclaw in prison from Vault 13, a computer, and a scientist with a cybernetic dog. I go to the computer to see where the main base of the Enclave is. It turns out that the Enclave base is in the middle of the ocean, and that the only way to get there is by Vertibird or by using a nearby tanker that is at San Fran that needs a key fob to use. I go to the west end where the scientist and the dog are. The scientist made an intelligent cybernetic dog and then crippled it because he didn't approve of his research. Thankfully this room is soundproof because the boss complained of about the screaming. So I shot him and claimed his dog as my own. On the east end there is a guard we could do a speech check to get the key fob the commander has in his locker. Then we head to the maintenance room and grab the part needed to fix the cybernetic dog and grab this schematics for the vertebrate on the way. We fix a dog and free the death claw and head back to San Fran. In the tanker we need to refuel and fix a navcom unit that is very difficult to get to because of these mutant aliens that are in the storage area of the tanker. We also need to get this guy's girlfriend back so he could siphon the energy from she. We install the navcom unit then we are off to the oil rig where the enclave have been holding out this entire time. We infiltrate using the enclave power armor. I have to leave my companions behind unless they shoot me on sight. Not even the cybernetic dog that was part of the enclave. I loot the entire base before talking to anyone, so I'd be geared up before combat. I go down to see that the enclave have captured both the vault dwellers of Vault 13 and our tribe. I learn from the village elder that they're experimenting on them with the FEV virus they have found in the military base. The vault dweller just across the elder's cell tells us that we need to blow up the reactor to set them free. I navigate the inner workings of the oil rig and find an old enclave sign. He experimented on people of the waste with the FEV virus. He thought all those people weren't human. I convinced him to guess the oil rig 
with the FEV virus and give me and the prisoners the antidote to the virus. Then we speak to the main antagonist, which is the President of the United States, now known as the Enclave. He loves yapping, so I went behind him, sneaked up, and shot him in the back, and grabbed his presidential pass. I go down another level and wait for a bit, so all the scientists and civvies die from the gas, so I could plant the bomb on the reactor. With the reactor about to go to meltdown in 10 minutes, we have to rush to the exit where the tanker is being held. Near the exit, there is some enclave secret service. They warn us about Frank Horgan that is guarding the exit and it will kill anyone who is fleeing. Frank Horgan is the one we saw slaughtering innocents and killing the Death Claws back in Vault 13. He is basically a super mutant behemoth with high intellect, power armor, and advanced weaponry. He will tank six Vulcan cannon turrets, and if you convince the Enclave to join you, he will tank their shots. He is a walking nightmare, and even with his legs gone, he will still try to attack you. His voice lines are metal as hell. You've gotten a lot farther than you should have. But then you haven't met Frank Horgan either. Your ride's over, Muty. Time to die. Making our reactor meltdown means that things are going to be pretty hot in here soon. Pity you won't live long enough to see it. You're not a hero. You're just a walking corpse. Now with him and his soldiers dead, that is the end of the game. I get a cutscene of the Enclave base exploding, and this is the end I got. After the Enclave's destruction, the refugees of Arroyo and Vault 13 resettled, building a new community with the aid of the Garden of Eden creation kit. Finding themselves hundreds of miles from their vault, the members of Vault 13 chose to join the villagers in establishing a new community, and their technical expertise combined with the village's survival skills, allowed the new settlement to grow and prosper. Two generations of the same bloodline were reunited, and their savior, the Chosen One, became Elder, presiding over the village in the years to come. Relations between the Slags and the residents of Modoc flourished. Between the two peoples, Modoc prospered and became a major farming community supplying all the outlying regions with food. Metzger's slave trade in the den expanded greatly, giving him influence and power throughout most of the area. Breeding pens were started, and eventually, no one was safe from the threat of being enslaved. Travelers avoided the den, hearing of the evils committed within its walls. In the years to come, Vault City suffered greatly from raider attacks. Eventually, the situation grew so desperate, the citizens were forced to request aid from NCR. Within a month, a large detachment of the NCR's military was stationed in Vault City. The military presence quickly became an occupation force, and Vault City became the first of NCR's border territories. The Mordino family grew greatly in power as Jet's influence spread across Northern California. Within a year, they had seized control of New Reno and expanded their empire, absorbing the den and other surrounding areas. There was little violence in the conquest, as Jet had weakened all resistance to Mordino rule. Myron died less than a year after the defeat of the Enclave, stabbed by a Jet addict while drinking in the den. His discovery of Jet was quickly forgotten, and now there is no one who remembers his name. Repairing Gecko's power plant prevented any further radioactivity from leaking into Vault City's groundwater. Though this eased tensions between the two communities, they still maintain an uneasy truce. The gold-producing town of Redding soon found itself in the unenviable position of a scrap of meat being torn by three jealous vultures. Sooner than many would have expected, there was nothing left of the scrap that was once Redding. For Vault City, New Reno, and the New California Republic had laid waste to what was once an area of plenty. Nothing now exists but the desiccated husk of what was once Redding. With the destruction of the conspiracy to destroy the mutants, Broken Hills began to thrive. 
Then, the uranium ran out. The city, having lost its sole reason for existing, slowly dispersed. The residents carried their riches with them, leaving the place a windswept, desolate ghost town. A few holdouts remained, attempting to eke out a pathetic existence, but eventually, they too disappeared. The failure of diplomacy at Vault 15 slowed the New California Republic's growth into the North. Embarrassed by the failure, President Tandy was replaced by Roger Weston. When the new government finally returned to Vault 15, they found nothing but a ghost town. The squatters of Vault 15 continued their meaningless, non-productive lives. No one noticed when the desert wastes finally claimed the squat. By eliminating the death claws of Vault 13, you banished yet another species of the realms of extinction, proving once again that genocide is a viable solution to any problem. The she flourished creating a botanical scourge on the radiation surrounding their beloved town. Though this vine could not grow in other soils, the she took care to nourish it in their lands. They continued to grow in strength and prominence, forming the basis of a new empire. As for the tanker vagrants, well, as vagrants do, they drifted on. <laughs>